Hi, I'm Jeff Cohn, host of the Team Building Podcast, where we interview top team leaders, broker owners, and thought leaders from across the country. First and foremost, I have a co-host with me today in my broker and business partner, Renee Mueller. Renee, welcome. Hey, Jeff. Looking forward to interviewing an amazing guest out of El Paso, Texas. She also happens to be an elite real estate systems client and will be speaking as a abundance of proof speaker at our upcoming team building summit in May, 2021 in person in Omaha, Nebraska. Welcome Alyssa Herman to the show today. Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So what's so fun about Alyssa is she's one of like, she's like a teacher's pet. Alyssa does everything oh ERS recommends and has had amazing success in a short amount of time. And of course, our audience members, there's brokers that follow us. There's other thought leaders in the industry that follow us. But I know we have a ton of aspiring team leaders and you're either not licensed yet. You just got licensed or maybe you have a couple agents. And I think Alyssa has the story that you know, everyone's fearful to grow. Um, and Alyssa's grown a ton in a very short amount of time. But she's going to share that story with us a little bit today. And Renee and I are just going to kind of take turns asking questions that we think the audience would want us to ask. And then, of course, at the Team Building Summit, um, it's going to be a similar format. Renee's going to do a 30-minute interview with Alyssa in front of a couple hundred people. So really grateful for you coming on today, Alyssa. Thank you for making time for this. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I'll kick it off with an initial question that I'm sure people are wondering. How many houses did you sell last year? So in 2020, amidst a pandemic, um, newly launched real estate team, share with us some of your numbers. So we sold 87 homes last year. Um, we, we started the year, you know, with just one agent. And at the end of the year, we, we grew quite a bit in the fourth quarter. So the fourth quarter is what really had the majority of our sales. Okay. And how many agents did you end the year with? We ended the year with 10. Okay. So in 2020, it was you and one other. Yes. And ended the year with you and 10 others. Yes. All right. That's a lot of growth in a year in one. Yeah, it year. was impressive. Yes. Cause I had somebody um, pushing me. I love it. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. So in our first year as a team, 2011, uh, we had my mom and dad and myself, uh, Kevin McGowan as our ops manager. And we decided to launch our team. And within three months, we had six people. And within 12 months, we had 12 people. Um, so very similar growth trajectory. And what I always say to individuals wanting to build and scale is that they're in a much stronger position than I was or Renee was because of podcasts like this and coaching organizations like ours, the team, um, Elite Real Estate Systems and the Team Building Podcast that's created specifically for helping people do this. Not everyone wants to do this. So my follow-up question, and I'll steal your second question, Renee, is why did you want to grow? Because a lot of agents listening are like, yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to go list some houses and not have to babysit children. And you started in 2006, right, Jeff? 2011 is when we launched the team. Oh, okay. But yeah, in six, so I got my license. Market then. Yeah, yeah so, totally different. Yeah. So I, well, children is the reason why I wanted to start a team. I have a four and a six-year-old, and my goal was that by the time my son was in kindergarten, that I would be able to pick him up from school every day. And, and I wasn't you're picking him up today, right? I am. When this is over, I'm going to go pick him up today. So that was the biggest thing for me was to be able to spend time with my kids and not showing homes till eight o'clock at night and Saturdays and Sundays. And I guess also being able to help people, but not in the way that we help buyers and sellers, because it's like you help them for a hot second and then they're gone, mm -hmm. that you can actually pour into somebody's life and be there to nurture that whenever you're mm, you know, interesting. having them as an agent. This reminds me of the agent advisor role that we've been talking about now for over a year, where the agent can bring more value than just opening a door, which you can hire someone to do that for $8 an hour, um, depending on your state. And um, now actually offering value post-transaction or pre-transaction ever happening in other areas. So I love it. Renee. Yeah, I'm curious, Alyssa. It sounds like you've been able to leverage through growing your team pretty yes. quickly. So has that given you the freedom that you expected or has that been more work for you? Um, it's a it's a different kind of work. So tons of freedom. I actually get to, you know, go home at four o'clock and, you know, turn off my phone every once in a while and go to my parents' house on the weekends and not have to worry. But my I now have 12 clients that are 
my clients that I answer to 24 seven. So I treat my agents like my clients. And so if they need to write a contract at eight o'clock at night and they need help with that, they do call me. So I just take different kinds of appointments. Mm. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I grew pretty quickly as well. So we started with six agents and went to 20 agents pretty quickly. So, and I've seen several come and go since then, but um, in markets like we have now, it seems like it's very common for, you know, we get calls every week, I think for people that want to get licensed and it's, yeah. it's easy because houses are selling very quickly and the market's just so fast paced right now. So it was very different when Jeff started, when I started in 2000 and I was not interested in growing a team at all. So I never thought I would have a team. It was not even in my, it like, it, it's not something I ever wanted to do. And then when I got my first agent and I saw her grow and, um, you know, it, it's kind of goes back to that dream manager, right? And, and you watch their dreams happen and you watch them get to the next stage in life. That's what really motivated me to grow. Like having 12 children then. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. Well, and this is exactly the sentiment I shared with our agents yesterday. Uh, we hosted a family reunion here in our office, and I was talking about how sad I was that so many top agents that everyone puts up on this big pedestal spend their entire careers keeping all of their secrets to themselves and not sharing it with the agent community locally or nationally. And this is the very reason we launched the team building podcast almost five years ago and have had almost 200 episodes is I wanted to give back to the agent community locally and nationally. And of course it's a huge success. We get over a hundred thousand downloads a year, but it was all about exactly what you said. And that is watching the impact and influence I could create to help change the lives of those around me. And I know for Renee, that's the same thing that fuels your desire. So for those listening, there's two camps of people. One, going, how the hell did she recruit 12 people or 10 people in 12 months? And then there's another camp of people going, I know exactly how to recruit 10 people in 12 months, but then how do I babysit them? Mm -hmm. So let's have those be the next two questions. First, how do you find 10 people? Second, how do you babysit 10 people? So um, I am lucky that um, I am able to talk to new agents within my market center. Um, so I'm able to get in front of them if they mention that they want to be a part of the team at a team period, they can interview all the teams. And I am one of the teams that they interview. Um, what I found lately is I probably get 50% of the new agents that want to join a team in my market center or more. Wow. They, they'll join my team. Um, and I let them know from day one, you know, my value is not leads. I give them, but that's not my main value. Hmm. Um, and then when it comes to taking care of that many agents, there was an agent on my team that already, um, was helping when I wasn't available. You know, I have kids. If you have an appointment at, um, you know, seven o'clock on a Friday, that's going to be very hard for me to join that, you know, first listing appointment with you. That's going to be a harder one for me. And so I had this agent that was just, he was doing that already. And so I turned his role um, into, now I'm drawing a blank on the name of his role. He was just, what is Andy? He's like, success, success manager. <laughs> yeah. And so he's my, I consider him right now my Andy and, cool. and kind of my Clayton together. So well, he, I know um, a lot of people's biggest fear on expanding is all the extra time, like Renee was asking, that you're now going to have to put into managing that team. Um, and one of the things elite real estate systems will teach is that you just create leveraged positions. So exactly. the two primary leveraged positions that I had to create once I got to 10 agents was hiring a full-time success manager mm -hmm. and hiring a full-time operations manager who ran the back end. That was my operator essentially. Yeah. I have both of those. That's handy, right? Exactly. So talk a little bit about your experience working with ERS and how elite real estate systems has helped you facilitate all of this growth in such a short period of time. You said this year in 2021, you think you guys will do over 200 sites. Yes. 220. Um, that's, that's my goal. Um, so what I've done this, well, ERS, well, I met you at family reunion. Well, not me. I was in the second row when you were speaking. Um, and so you had mentioned your podcast and I downloaded it right then, um, and reached out and, um, I joined you guys in like April or May and we had one person, I was in another, um, coaching program and I wanted to have more agents on my team. Cause I just, I was getting burnt out on helping her also doing, um, you know, appointments and this, and I was just, I was getting really burnt out on that. And so, um, when I talked to Logan Boyce, 
he was like, what do you mean you have six people that want to join your team, but you can't take them on? Mm -hmm. Like, why? I was like, well, my coach told me I couldn't, not till I produce Mm -hmm. more. And he was like, well, do you want to produce more? No, I don't. So I told him to give me 30 minutes to think about joining ERS. And I called and fired my coach (laughs) in 15 minutes. Your coach had a limiting belief about growth. Here's my question to your coach. And this is a rhetorical to anyone else listening right now. How big of a team did your coach create? Oh, she taught. They said that they got seventh level and didn't like it and got rid of it. So in Keller Williams world, ladies and gentlemen, um, you said three now words that are only Keller specific. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Market center she's in where she's getting a lot of her recruits, which was also the place I got the most of mine. Um, That's just a real estate office. So real estate brokerage she's at is what's generating a lot of her recruiting leads. That's where we got a lot of our recruiting leads. Second thing was family reunion, which is a yearly event. It's not her actual family reunion. Um, It's (laughs) an event that Keller Williams puts on. Um, in Texas, typically, or is it not? I don't even know. No, I, it's all over. One year, New Orleans. Right. This year's supposed to be Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was and, supposed and, to be Vegas on my birthday this year, and it got canceled. Oh. And then what was the buzzword she just said? Uh, I can't remember. Is that right? Hmm. Has it been no, there was there was something else she said about KW related. You mean? Yeah. 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 I can't remember now. I said, oh, oh seven level. level. There we go. Seven, seven level. level. Okay. Thank you. So millionaire real estate agent was written in 2005 by Gary Keller talks about going to the seventh level. That's where you net a million dollars a year off of the company you create by not working in any particular role, which is a job like selling real estate, being the rock star agent, crushing it um, and working on a business. And so her coach told her that they got to seventh level, making net million dollars a year and just creating impact and influence and growing their business and then didn't like it. That yeah, I, I have a hard time believing that. And that's when yeah. I decided that, you know, I looked you up and realized that you did have the numbers to back you up and you weren't filling us full of smoke. And so I, I joined you guys. And I mean, the first call that I had, and I love group coaching, by the way, everybody knocks it off because it's not personalized one-on-one, but like you said, you learn so much And at the end, when everybody's asking questions, you know, it's amazing what you can learn. And it's not just an intense accountability meeting. You can have that, yeah. but it's not like coaching to me before I always felt like I was going to the principal's office. Yep. And it's literally something I look forward to all week long now. And so I just started, you know, every time you guys would say something, I would implement it that week. So I was just implementing something every single week. And last year it got me, you know, it, it got me 10 agents and now I'm at 12. But what I've discovered is now I have a ton of brand new agents. Three of the people on my team are past sellers. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And what's funny is I brought the buyer to their house. Mm. So are you recruiting <laughs> them through, through just realizing that they might make great agents and telling them to come into the group? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Or if they even mention real estate. Yep. You know, I bring them to KW and then now that I have a team, they're, they're just joining my team. Um, and you know, my team has, or my, my market center has a great, you know, coaching program for new agents, but they can't give them everything that I can give them. Sure. Well, this, so, is, this is the future. So what I see as far as growth of a market center is that every real estate office in the country today, here's some special sauce, ladies and gentlemen, every real estate office in the country today should have a productivity coaching platform that's treated just like a real estate team owned by a separate leadership group, possibly inside the market center or the real estate brokerage that provides education, lead generation, coaching, accountability, systems, technology. And that's exactly what Alyssa has now built. And that's exactly why KW Elite was created. Our intention is to partner with any and all Keller Williams brokerages across the country by creating that team with them and partnering 50-50 in that venture. So for anyone listening that's part of KW that's interested in being one of those partners to us, feel free to reach out to me. You can just send me a direct message um, in Instagram at Jeff M. Cohn. So, Renee Mueller, what other follow-up questions? I was just going to follow up to what you just said, the comment there about uh, having all those options and and letting everyone know that Elite Real Estate Systems has allowed me to step out and leverage my team a lot more as well. So we run meetings on a regular basis. And yes, like you mentioned, I do have one-on-ones with my agents and and I help them grow, um, you know, by meeting with them individually on a regular basis, like I said. But 
also with the coaching that you have, that's virtual, they're able to take part in the, the coaching, um, two or three times a week, every time you offer it. I think most of the agents in my office are taking part. And at one point we had Andy actually helping with them as well. So while I am the broker of the offices in Nebraska and, um, partners with Jeff on several things, it, it is very helpful. I could not do that without having his team implement, um, everything that they do within his office as well. So awesome. Thank you, Renee. Yeah. I think that's pretty fascinating to me too, as I think about us, um, as a team, as Omaha's elite real estate group, having to always be training, we came from an independent brokerage and not to knock any broker. I've, uh, everyone I've dealt with it in my 15 years has treated us great and has done their very best. The problem is their very best isn't good enough. The traditional broker loses 19 out of 20 agents within their first two years of being licensed. That's pathetic. That's pathetic because they're not putting enough onus um, and emphasis on the education offered to new agents because that's not where a majority of their money is coming from. It's the 80-20 rule where 20% of the agents are creating 80% of the profit and those 20% are top producers. So most companies aren't supporting the new agent. And that's exactly why Alyssa is finding this opportunity to help grow. So anyone listening that wants to find a great place to grow, go to the recruiter of your brokerage or go find a brokerage that has a recruiter and say, hey, we know a lot of new agents aren't just going to, aren't going to be able to survive because the brokerage, the traditional brokerage hasn't created a, a template to help them succeed. I would love to take those people on and train them and hold them accountable and provide them leads and give them systems and plug them into elite real estate systems coaching. That's the future if companies want to survive. And that's also where the profit's going to come from. Real estate brokerages today don't make money. That's why it's called a brokerage. Yep. That's exactly right. <laughs> you profit go, margin has you go broke. decreased substantially. So, so you do yeah. make money on teams. Teams do an amazing job. And that's what Gary Keller's book was all about. MREA mm -hmm. um, talks about how to actually generate profit off of building a real estate business and treating it like a business. So Alyssa, uh, that brings us to the close. Any final thoughts, feelings? I do have one more question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So on the note of what you've implemented to help your team become successful, is there anything that you've done that was not successful that didn't work? Mm. As of yet, I mean, you're Ooh, let's do something thing. ERS recommended. Well, that what's the what biggest fail at? with ERS? Like you said, you implemented every single thing. What have you implemented that you were like, I shouldn't? I'm glad have done you said that. that. I wasn't going to throw it. Out. Uh, I canceled the subscription to very quickly. The what? <laughs> said something that I canceled the subscription to rather sure. quickly. Do you have one? Uh, yeah, it was CSU, but honestly, it was just because it was repetitive. But that, I think it's fantastic. I'm going to go back to it probably, but it was just, it was repetitive for right now because of what we have. Um, one thing that you did um, really get through to me and it is now a big part of my pitch for recruiting. Um, and I heard you say it, I think one time is that um, now for new agents to be able to compete, you know, with, with agents like us, right? It's expensive, <laughs> they can't afford to list like we do. They so I be. wanted to create something that I wish existed when I was a new agent yep. so that I could got, so that I could get my foot forward and actually be able to compete with the big teams and the big agents here in El Paso, because wow. that was hard as heck. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to do it. Are and you so, saying the traditional broker doesn't provide the new agent with the best systems, technology, leads, accountability, coaching, Absolutely none of that. Brokers. No. And so our biggest thing is, you know, like you said, the accountability is huge. I can tell you that the, the few agents on my team that are not doing as good as everybody else are the ones that don't show up to their accountabilities. Yep. And I will not call them to say, remember, oh, let me babysit you. accountability. And I think when they come in and say, I'm not closing anything. And I'm like, yeah, I know, because um, when we're keeping tabs on who's going to training and who's going to accountability, you're not it, girl. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the big follow up, and I've shared this a lot on the podcast, but I just love it. And it took a lot of the monkey off my back because like Renee and like you, Alyssa, I did care about the people's success. And it's so hard to watch people come in and they're so excited. And then over time they fail they fail to do the key performance indicators that are going to make yes. them successful. They fail to educate themselves, to help them become the best version of themselves so that they can go and do all these things that we're teaching them to do. And when they fail, extreme ownership would say, we should take responsibility uh -huh. and say, this failure was our fault, but it only is your fault. Those listening, 
if you haven't set them up for success, if you haven't followed the process to help them become the best versions of themselves, and when they choose to not drink at the font that you've provided, the follow-up question is, what item do you want to remove from your bucket list? Exactly. What item do you want to take off your vision board? Because you can't have everything and not put in the work like the typical millennial mentality believes. Hey, I'm a millennial. Me too. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you're running the cusp I just looked it up. Jeff. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. 1981 to 90. He's almost 40, y'all. <laughs> Close. <laughs> so the point being, you know, I think so many agents want the success and the accolades and the awards, and they don't want to make the 150 dials this week and be held accountable. And you know, it's and, so and, funny. And, and. It's so funny. I have people that tell me, because I'll have people come in here that aren't on my team and they'll be like, I don't know what to do. You know, tell me. And I will literally give them my entire game plan. Yeah. I will tell them every single thing I know. And then my assistant will be like, I can't believe you just told them everything for free. I'm yeah. like, they're not going to do it. Check they wanted out. the easy button. Five years ago, I bought a URL, jeffsbusinessplan.com. That URL still exists. If you go there, you're going to get my free business plan. It tells you the exact steps we took to become the number one team in the world at Berkshire Hathaway and the fastest growing real estate team in history, going from 70 to 700 sales. But and it's we've not had, an easy button. We've had thousands of people download it and they download it and they look at the process and they go, I don't want to do that. Not that they can't. Everyone thinks they can. Anybody can be well, successful, right? But mm-hmm. they just don't choose to be and that's on them. And I think a lot of people... Um, we, we mistake people that don't like us. And this happens a lot for people that are successful. We mistake them not liking us to the idea that they don't like us because of the people that we are, they actually don't like the person that they have become. And we represent the person that they could have been. And that's the mindset of a true leader. And it's not our job to ridicule those. I love my enemy. I actually just posted this on Facebook a couple of days ago. It's my job to give support to those that want it. To your point of people coming up to you in the office asking, how did you do this? How did you do that? Uh Renee has been a great example of that as well as reaching out to people across brokerage flags, you know, and being open to sharing with them. Not only sharing, we've partnered with agents. I'm, I'm partners right now in a title company with one of the top agents at Berkshire Hathaway in the world. And he and I get along great. There's no, I don't care about the brokerage yeah. at all. I couldn't care less. What I care about is That's helping right. others become the best versions of themselves. Alyssa, this has been a great interview. Renee, thank you for coming on, thank you. Uh, co-hosting this event with me. We are hosting some upcoming events in Omaha that are very exciting. Of course, the Team Building Summit being the main event. If anyone would like more information about all upcoming events, please go out to the teambuildingsummit.com for more information on the summit or EliteRealEstateSystems.com. Click on events. Also, Give Alyssa a shout out. Uh, give her a five-star review on iTunes. Super simple. Go to the Team Building Podcast on iTunes. Five-star review with a little shout out to Alyssa. We're trying to get to a thousand reviews and can't do it without you. So thank you guys again, Alyssa, Renee. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Looking forward Thanks, to actually Dad. talking at the Team Building Summit, Alyssa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> be prepared. I will be. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. See, See ya. you, Alyssa.